in a more serious light, I, I really wanted to know, not just in the moment, like in that game, but for games the next day and the day after that, how difficult is it to plan and manage your bullpen when the starters have been struggling getting deep into games? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely tricky um, when it comes to, you know, when we have 12 guys in the bullpen, it, it makes it a little bit easier, but uh, you just don't want to wear anybody out, especially early in the season. We were already kind of concerned um, with the shortened camp that, you know, guys were going to need, you know, extra days. Um, we're trying to avoid any back-to-backs early on. Uh, we were kind of forced to at times, but uh, overall, I mean, the guys have kind of bounced back. You know, John, even though he struggled the first yesterday, was able to get through five, which really helped. So kind of reset our bullpen a little bit, especially with the off day. Do you, do you feel like you're asking a lot of your hitting, your 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 lineup right now to do a lot of work because of what's happening? And the, y'all haven't given up any less than four runs uh, so far this season. So do you feel like there's a lot more pressure uh, on the lineup to produce? Um, you listen, it's a team thing, man. I think, you know, there's going to be times when the, when the pitch is right. There's going to be times when the hitters struggle. And you got to pick each other up. So I think that's probably the most important thing. I don't think... Anybody in the locker room is pointing fingers or, or doing anything like that. And, uh, you know, we just all got to kind of come together and, you know, somebody's got to go out and give us a good outing and, and get a W. Okay. One of the one of the things, Chris, we, we kind of noticed was that hitting from the sixth inning on for this team is, it seems to be struggling. And I'm kind of curious, like, why that, why you feel my, like that might be a problem for you guys right now? Um, I think we might be just putting a little pressure on ourselves, you know, late in the game, especially when the game is tight. Uh, we're also facing a lot of the team's best arms because we've been behind. So, I mean, there's a, there's a number of factors, but listen, I mean, our guys, you know, we talk about it. We're open about it. Um, we got to get better in those situations because those are situations where, you know, if we're going to, we're going to, like I said, be a winning team and learn how to win, like, we got to be successful in, in those innings. You made reference to, you know, no one's finger pointing or blaming or anything like that. And I certainly understand that. How much of, your job is to kind of keep an eye out for that and make sure that that kind of atmosphere does not develop in any particular clubhouse. Yeah, I think that's huge. That's everything, right? Um, our culture is everything we have. And, uh, right now is a really important time. And, you know, it's a, it's a unique time for a lot of our newer guys to kind of, you know, write the ship. Um, and, and not necessarily, listen, we all want to win a game and we're all, you know, we all can't wait to win one um, so we can get rolling. But at the same time, like culturally speaking, you know, we have to maintain our, our calmness, and, and those guys in the clubhouse have to kind of show the show the younger guys, hey, we're not going anywhere. We're not bailing on anything. We're sticking together. Um, we're riding this out together. I have great news for you on the winning a game front. Last week, when you talked to us, of the wins that y'all do have, one of them came the very next day after you talked to us, you and go. it was the first game after you talked to us. So I'm just saying, good vibes. There you go. Good vibes. Woody, I have a general question here. Last night, you guys gave up three home runs. One was on a slider away, probably off the plate a little bit, maybe a little bit below the belt. The other two were kind of above the belt. And I feel like in a general statement, people have kind of said over the last few years, hey, you want to avoid the lower parts of the zone because those are more of the home run zones now with the swings that are happening. I feel like, I don't have all the numbers, but it feels like a lot of times when I'm still watching – uh, MLB network and stuff and watching the highlights of home runs still it seems like the guys to me are hitting a lot of home runs more like at the belt high pitches rather than the knee high pitches yeah no you're right um, and I think hitters have made the adjustment to get to the high fastball because so many teams are using it as a weapon they're you know teaching their guys to pitch at the top of the zone oh. Seattle has a bunch of guys that pitch at the top of the zone um, and you're right I mean if you barrel up a ball or you you, you hit one at the top, it usually goes in the air. And if you hit it on the barrel and it goes in the air um, at the right angle, it's probably going to be a homer. So, um, yeah, yesterday, you know, Toro's ball, it probably needed to be two or three inches higher. It's not a terrible pitch. It's a t- at the top of the zone or just above it, to be honest with you. Um, just probably needs to be a little bit higher. But that's the risk. You know, it's a, it's a pitch that works, obviously, for Patton. It's just, you know, unfortunately, Toro got to it. Um, but, yes. I think the hitters have made the adjustment. It used to be the launch angle thing where guys are kind of scooping every ball out because most pitchers pitched at the bottom of the zone. But now pitchers pitch at the top, so hitters have made the adjustment to get to it. Tonight's a, a pretty big game for uh, Dane Dunning. I'm excited to watch him. He has an ERA where it's seven in the first inning, three after pretty much the first inning is over in his uh, you know young career with the Texas Rangers. And we've talked about it a little bit last year. 
it seems like he pulls the ball a little bit and doesn't get the good sink on it uh, until he maybe, I say, fatigues a little bit after a, a few pitches. Is there something that uh, you guys kind of look at to try to work on on how can we get that first pitch, not only for Dane Dunning, but for all your starting pitchers to be a very, I don't know if intense is the right word, but like locked in from pitch one so you're not starting the game down maybe one or two runs? Yeah, no, it's, it's something we talk about, especially with Dane. And Dane's open to it. He wants to figure it out. He knows that he has to figure out that first inning to be a successful major league pitcher. Um, and whether that's, you know, if we use an opener for him or anything like that, he still has to pitch his first inning. And so for him to be ready, uh, you know, in that bullpen, he says he prepares. Um, he's, he's willing to change some things up a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't say throw more. Um, just maybe the mindset, you know, getting him in a, in a better mental state to, to be calm and just to be able to execute pitches. But it's something we talk about with all of our pitchers and something we need to obviously all get better at because um, the second you come into the game, you know, it's it's foot on the gas and we're trying to go right at opposing hitters and not let them off the hook. But it seems like every time, you know, Dane has trouble in that first inning, it usually comes from a lack of execution. Woody, I know uh, Marcus and Corey, when they when they got here, it's business. They want to change what the Rangers have done. You know, that, and I know you want that to change, too. And I am kind of curious, like sometimes you're so focused and you're so like, in, Mike used the word intense. And I, I do. I'm not saying maybe throw an 80s party in the clubhouse or anything <laughs> like that. But how do you know when to when to say, you know what, I need to push and then I need to I need to get the guys to realize, you know, that this is a game and we can have fun and we can also win, too. Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely something I preach. We definitely, you know, have a blast in the clubhouse. I want guys to enjoy themselves, but at the same time, whenever there's a lack of focus or when I feel like we're not doing things that we should be doing from a process standpoint, or, we're, you know, we haven't really not played hard any, at any point, but, you know, if we're just, there's a lack of execution or a lack of something that we should be doing better, then obviously we're, they're going to hear about it. But, you know, if they're doing everything, I felt like last night we competed well. You know, guys were prepared. They went out there. They, they followed the game plan. You know, we faced a, a really good pitcher. You know, John had a, you know, a little bit of a hiccup in the first. He's a little bit rusty. So there was no really complaints for me. We just got beat. Um, we got beat by three pitches, basically, that they hit out. So in days like that, you kind of move on and, you know, keep light of it and let's get the next day. But you know, if there's any issues, then we got to kind of be hard on them and make sure that they're, they're preparing the right way. Uh, Woody, I know that you're dealing with your major league team as a fan. You know, I, I look at the minor league stats quite a bit just to see how uh, the guys, especially in AAA and AA, are doing for the Texas Rangers. Leody Tavares is off to a great start. And I know last year in the major leagues, he didn't get off to a great start uh, and then went down to the minor leagues and worked on his craft. How many games do you feel like a guy like Leody Tavares this year in the minor leagues needs to maybe – get himself back up to the major leagues and show that he's kind of that premium prospect that people thought he was a few years ago? Well, if he keeps doing what he's doing, I don't think it's going to be much longer, to be honest with you. And I, I, I don't know exactly how many games that is, but I do know what I, I like when I see. Um, we watch the video. I think we're all kind of watching to see if it's, uh, you know, if it resembles what could be successful in the major leagues. Um, we're looking at his chase percentage and some of the pitches he's swinging at, how he's handling their bat. And if he's doing it right, then – He'll be with us at some point. Like it's, uh, it's just a matter of fact. Like this, this kid's one of our top prospects. He's one of our best, most talented players in the organization. So, um, been fun to watch because he's off to a really hot start. Like you said, does that same line of logic apply to Cole Win? Uh, yeah. Listen, our, I think our pitchers. We got to make sure they're they're ready. I mean, if they're executing and they're, you know, the pitches look look good. They're overpowering hitters and. Um, then yeah, maybe they can they can make it up, but there has to be a spot, obviously. And we want to probably be a little bit more careful with the, with the pitchers. Um, but Leo, he's had some time in the big leagues, so I think he's uh, he's getting close to being ready. 